just ask so people know exactly at 17 then, so what, what happened? I'd cut my right arm in half, which is something I'm absolutely certain you didn't know. I had the world of sports yep. in my palm and I could pretty much do whatever I wanted yep. to do and uh, I didn't lose. I didn't lose at anything. I didn't lose at Monopoly. I didn't lose the game of football. I did whatever I wanted to do and what someone else sees is strange. Someone else is common practice that can't judge somebody else until you appreciate and understand their thinking behind what they're doing. Radio, here we are, the Pete Takeoffs podcast, and we've got a special guest. So much to talk about with this guy, so many elements to this man, he's uh, very well rounded. I'll just give you a bit of a snapshot. Dylan, you might not know a lot of this about this great man. Uh, I will revo- reveal that he was born in 1973, a very Ooh. young 44 years of age. AFL debut at 19- in 1992 at the age of 18, which is a very young age to debut in the AFL. Premiership with Carlton in 1995 versus the Cats, 178 AFL games. Regular star on the footy show. Dylan, you know about the footy show, but you wouldn't know this man was a natural and uh, a regular guest on the footy show. Well, you should. Do your <laughs> research. <laughs> uh, he's, he's performed at a comedy festival, Fringe. He's done radio shows. was a goalkeeper in soccer. He's a motivator, podcaster, public speaker, author. It goes on and on. Co-founder of White Lion Non-Profit organization assisting youth in crisis so you know wow. it's unbelievable glenn well-rounded that's mate. a crazy intro and you haven't even said my name glenn manton oh goodness me. Right. Did, any applause do we get anything <laughs> there's a cat sitting next to me here and it's just licking itself <laughs> frantically at the sound of my name so i guess that's an endorsement man i think that seriously is a very well all-rounded balanced sort of uh, scena- uh profile uh i know you I feel like I know you very well from the footy show and watching you play and all those things. So I know your character. You know, I've done a lot of reading about you. You know your character. You think you a know lot my about character. It. Wow. Well, that's I know enough to know. Presumptuous, I reckon. I really know enough to know you. You are very different. I'm and different, I, am I? And I think you like being different. Do I? And you, I know you're entertaining. Entertaining. You're okay. definitely entertaining. I'll we'll marry you by the end of this podcast. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off with a question for you, mate. Please. What's Glenn Manton all about? What, what does he stand for? What, what does he stand for? What does he stand for? I'm authentic. I'm the yeah. real deal. I'm who you see each and every day, every single minute, every single second, when yeah. I get out of bed until I retire for the end of the day. I'm me. I don't pretend to be anyone else. Yeah. And I went through a very, very tough life lesson at the age of 17 that brought me to that realization that you can't be anyone else. You have to be yourself. And I've lost friends, money, time, opportunity as a result of being myself. And my um, ability to have convictions that uh, obviously reflect who I am. Uh, but I can't have it any other way. Uh, I don't live my life with disrespect to others, nor arrogance or ignorance, although at that period of time that I just mentioned of 17, I did. Uh, and I, I look to um, engage with as much of the world around me as I can, thus yeah. the introduction that you put forward. I've got a pretty simple choice. I sit on the couch and I bask in my past achievements or lie back in laziness or I continue to push boundaries and opportunities beyond what people thought I could achieve and potentially what I thought I could achieve. Can we just ask so people know exactly 17 then so what what happened? I cut my right arm in half which is something I'm absolutely certain you didn't know. I knew it was pretty bad. It was to do with hitting a window. I hit a window. Look at that. I've just knocked your little... Uh, That's right. Is that a camera phone? Is yes. That a cam- you've got a, a camera. camera on me yep. too here. Yep. I'm very, very sorry <laughs> about that. I just knocked you over and caused you to point up there. And that obviously ties in with the podcast. Yes. But now we're talking one-to-one. We're all happy again. And have a look over here. This is the cat that's licking itself. So there you go. <laughs> Frantically. Although it was a little bit more frantic when... My name was mentioned. Yeah, that I one. That. I reckon Dylan is that had how that you wanted it. You pointed it at you. Yes. Oh, we the got, arrogance got, and the both difference of that. We got that. on you here. You're happy with that? You've got. Yeah. Oh, look at yeah. that. Good. Well, we're all happy. Everyone's on film. That's we got great. In a couple of different angles. So, at the age of seventeen, yeah. I cut my arm in half, uh, my right arm, and 
I was told in <laughs> no uncertain circumstances by a doctor who was actually seconded from the UK, so he had no real business being in Melbourne at that time. He just happened to be here as a chance occurrence that uh, I would never use my arm in any way, shape, form again. He yeah. called me a fake. He called me a phony. He called me a fraud. Why did he call you that? What, what, on what basis? Uh, a 10-second analysis, a visual analysis of me once he stepped into the emergency department. Yeah. He was obviously uh, tired of seeing arrogant, indifferent teenage boys filled with t- testosterone and, um, and I guess, false values uh, come, up, come across him on a... He's done well to pick that up in 10 seconds. Yeah, well, he, he said to me, and I remember he said in a thick English accent, you're a right joke. And he's told me it would take four and a half hours approximately to put my arm back together. And he told me I would be the last person that he performed surgery on that night. And I had a choice. I could lie in that hospital bed and essentially wait for the surgery and uh, move on with my life the way it was. Or I could sit there, or I should say more particularly lay there, and think about who I was as a person and make some necessary changes. And as he said, he felt that my injuries were not physical. Mm -hmm. They were emotional and psychological. What was going through your mind before you spoke to him and then what was going through your mind after that? Well, I prior to the injury, I'd taken on the values of what I thought an AFL footballer okay. would have. Yep. So drinking, uh, I guess, partying to excess, uh, that arrogant, as I said, indifferent attitude to other people who couldn't uh, keep up with your abilities and or thinking. Uh, which was really unusual because I didn't grow up in that sort yeah. of household. But you were I, on that path to AFL footy, uh, AFL player though? I was. I was on virtually every path you could imagine. So I was an elite swimmer. I'd just been given an opportunity to essentially go overseas and play baseball. Uh, football was at my fingertips. <laughs> I, I had the world of sports yeah. in my palm and I could pretty much do whatever I wanted yeah. to do. And uh, I didn't lose. I didn't lose at anything. I didn't lose at Monopoly. I didn't lose at a game of football. I did whatever I wanted to do. And in fact, the year I went down to Essendon, I think I'd kicked 80-odd goals from 12 games from centre-half forward. Yeah. So the ball was on a string. Life was on a string. Confidence was, ho- confidence was high. Confidence yeah. was not high. Uh, confidence was actually very low. Arrogance was very, okay. very high. Yeah. Yeah. Indifference was very, very high. Uh, uh, an internalised, selfish nature was very, very high. Yeah. Uh, and as a result, uh, in that sort of scenario, I excelled for a short period of time mm. because people enjoy that sort of attitude at a pinch. But when they realise that that's your core values and core beliefs, then you tend to um, unstuck people and uh, unstick yourself. Yeah. And uh, I'll, as I said, I lost a lot of friends. I damaged my family. I damaged yeah. my schooling. You know, I was so lucky to sneak through year 12, given my behaviours. Yeah. So and after this guy just spoke to you, what impact did that have on you? What were changed you thinking? my whole then? life. I, really? I, I lay there in a the hospital bed and I decided that from that day forward, every day for the rest of my life, so as you said off the top, I'm 44, even though I look about 25 thanks <laughs> to Nivea. Uh, so essentially 30 years of my life, I've stood in front of the bathroom mirror every morning and I've asked myself one question based on colloquial Australian expression and that question is, are you fair dinkum? So are you for real? Yeah. And I've always been able to answer yes to that question. And that's something that I just can't, nor will I, compromise for anyone else. So if that's something that makes me different, then so be it. I don't see myself as being particularly different on many, many levels. You know, I'm covered in tattoos and piercings and all these sorts of things. In 2017, this is the norm. Yeah, this yeah. Is the norm. yeah, that's not as different as so it used to be. It, it used to be seen as different. Mm. And there are always people who are future thinkers. And I know that I certainly regard myself as a, a future thinker. Mm. And I know that comes at a cost. Yeah. So throughout time, there have been literally hundreds of thousands of men and women who have thought differently and been more creative ahead of the curve. And sometimes the timing's right, and most often it isn't. Yeah. And they pay the price. Well, it must admit, I, when I said being different, I, I see and with you in particular, is being different as being bold, being someone that's not scared to stand for what they are, not not beckon now to, as you said, when you're 17, to what everyone expects you to be or you sort of think is important to people. So I, I definitely, from what I've seen over the years about you, is that, that that's what stands out to me, Thank that you, you are quite bold and, and that takes a lot of guts because you're going against the grain a lot of the time and it's pretty brave. To stand up.